Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So this is something a little bit different from uh, my normal tutorials about Speedtree. Created a little scatter tool for Houdini Indie 20.5. Um, uh, the FX version will follow soon. Busy rewriting that one as well. So this is just a rundown tutorial video on how to use the new MS uh, scatter system created for Houdini. It is available on my Patreon shop um, feel free to go check that out if you would like to buy this. And um, yeah, so let me quickly dive in and show you how this works. So this whole scatter system works off the B scale attribute and um, I went ahead and created a little plane with some a mountain top in it and then mask by feature as you can see B scale value and you can add a attribute paint afterwards to paint in some roads and stuff like that and smooth it out as you wish and you have a normal attribute paint mode as you can see there and you have a uv texture mode this is where it's very useful to import um say for instance uh spat maps from gaia um data maps and stuff like that so you can um map specifically where you want your trees bushes etc rocks and so on and then you have the object mode as well um in this mode just quickly zoom in there i've built in a camera frustrum to optimize everything so you have a camera frustrum mode i'm just quickly going to the camera mode as you can see let's zoom out here a little bit we have our camera frustrum just link that camera okay so you have the distance and if we go and set on the back face cutting this is very useful for when you want to scatter this on let's say uh, moss on a tree and you don't want it behind the uh, on a certain point of an angle on your normals and stuff like that you can I mean this to suit how far you want this to go so that is the back face culling and as well the camera first trim um, so in the merge you have the default mask by feature this is now for the normal uh, scatter system and then you have your attribute pane as mentioned and in the points you have your total set of points you want to scatter on uh, you have your relaxation you have the scale based on attribute so if you have a p scale and you want to scale the base of that you have that and if you put this off you just have your normal um, scaling and in your uh, rotation you have your rotation value on the y-axis and the alignment you have your normals so you can set this to on so for trees and for that matter of fact and in the rotation you have your random rotation as well minimum and maximum and in the mask blur this will blur your um attribute mask your p-scale mask like this one it will blur it even further if you want to so you can blur this out to soften out the edges so that is the settings for the scatter points then we have our single scatter mode here and we have our three different species that's going out of that so if we go to the single scatter mode that we have right over here and let's scroll in here we have our color system as you can see this runs separately from our noise scale then we have our roughness slider there and the all the necessary nodes you would require so you can for instance go crazy here with the um, different set of settings here so let's make it something uh let's dive in here and let's make it something green and let's narrow this down to like this and let's add a maybe a yellow something like this so you have that control and this you can read into your material as a geo color if you're using karma and vray i think in vray it's vray user color or something like that and um yeah and so on every program every render engine has their node to import the cd attribute so this is the color tab for the single scatter and in the scatter tab we have the global scale scale by color noise and xyz scale xyz scale is as it says it scales it based on the xyz and the random values and we have the scale by color noise and this will scale the map based of the color you have assigned on your scattered points as you can see right over there so you can scale this like this is useful for something like dead grass or something in the line of that if we set that off oh you can uh, you can determine where you want this to happen something like this can work and in the global scale let's first put this off in the global scale you have the set attribute this will just set a default scale right over 
your map or your p scale value and if you set it to multiply it will multiply by based off that as well so if you uh, let's hit this little icon here to open up the ramp you can individually create your own little pockets where you want the scaling to happen as you can see so it's very user friendly and versatile this and also we have our probability map built in you can add as many as variants as you would like uh, this works off a probability value i've built in uh, how you use it in the object contest is as follows you use a symbol note and in the piece attribute you use probability uh, prob for short that i've created the attribute and in the copy to points node you can use the piece attribute there and set it to prop um in the solaris you would use um i will show you how you can do that in solaris and um, you know to export these points out and let's go back into the ms scatter and now we'll be moving over to the species scatter you have three sets of species you can use either you can just export the one out to solaris or render just one it's all up to you and if we go down to the merge function here we have merge the points together let's dive into the species tab here you have your set of um, species numbers you have there you have the different noise value for them how large you want the the the, the pattern to be for the species um, again same settings for the max octaves and roughness and, and if we go to the global settings let's just close the let's just close all the overrides here let's just close off the noise by scale here as well so in the global scale if you don't want to override the colors you have your global color which is what you're seeing here this you can export again to your render engine of choice with the cd attribute and yet again you have your global scale right over there for your color and in the global scale you have your again the same settings you have your set attribute operation and your multiply your amplitude right over there and again you can change the values of individual spaces where you want them to be larger and you have your scale by noise color as well so let's increase this value a little bit more decrease the or increase the minimum and you can play again with this value right over here okay so that is that is it for the global scale and if we go down to the species tab here you have individual species that you can overwrite the color so in species one let's make this something noticeable let's use the infrared and let's apply that and let's decrease the amount increase it and let's just play with the roughness and so on so you can play around with these values right over here split it to three okay and let's bring in these points a little bit more here so it's more defined and such and again you have the scale by noise color feature here so you can scale them based on the color of your noise and let's hit that little override color there as well and now you can scale it based on the noise attribute you have there and you have the x y and z scaling here as well to scale them individually and also you have your probability value built into this as well and this works for the species two and three the same principle and and so let's dive into our camera mode here if we go into the camera first room let's activate the camera let's locate it apply it set this to zero zero as you can see we have our camera first room working right there um the back face culling is mostly useful if you scatter like i said um your objects on a tree like moss etc and stuff like that that would be easier to back face cull then rather than to use it on a landscape like this so uh, yet again let's go over to the points attribute here or the points tab here like i said you have your random rotation you have your normal direction if you want to force them up a certain way and you have your let's just deactivate that one and then you have your cone angle here as well um so now i'm just gonna go and show you how you can import this to your solaris stage as well and use it there okay so now i'm going to show you how you can use this in solaris and such so let's let's create our let's zero out all these values right over here because we'll link in um our stage camera to those points there so what i like to do is i zero out these values as well so the camera is in the center let's 
copy this parameter let's dive in back into the objects context and let's paste this as relative reference and go back into the stage copy the uh, rotate parameter there and dive it back into the object stage and then paste that as relative reference so that the camera fashion will still work with in solaris uh sort of live linking it to the <clears throat> so let's select our camera here let's dive into our camera let's hit f on the keyboard so if we zoom in now we can see our camera fast trim is working so just a few things we need to uh link to our other cameras there as well let's go into the focal length let's copy that dive into the object and let's locate the focal length here paste this relative reference okay and then let's just dive back into the stage Let's get the horizontal aperture, copy that, dive back into the, and let's just paste that as relative reference there. So as you can see, the camera fast trim is now working in our Solaris viewport there as well, because it's moving the camera in the object context as well. So now we can literally just pin this here, dive into our object context here as it is, and we can play with the back face culling that's not needed for this flat view but we'll need it for this right over here so you can fine tune this as you need this one to 0 0.5 and you can for instance say you want this only to be 60 units away from you or something like that and um, that's how the camera fast trim will work how you can link that to your solaris and let's go dive back into the stage manager and i'll quickly show you how we set this up so i've created a little um few assets i've been using in um, this tutorial here and i've quickly created a variant system using the add variant node here added a variant set called gia and then in the explore variants i have a variant set filter set to geo and i've set them mode to explore variants and nested them and set the spacing to zero so they stacked on each other and then in the instancer i went for the external sop and just located my um, my output from the scatter system and i've set the first in i've set the prototype to first input in the prototype primitives i've set the to explore variants add variant and just the asterisk right over there and down below you set the index attribute to index attribute and using the prop um, attribute i've created so this will give you the ability to have the just quickly stop the render up so as you can see it is scattering the different variants that i've created here in the scatter system here if we go into the single scatter mode here into the probability we have our different sets here and in the camera fast trim as you can see because we've set this distance to 60 we're only getting 60 units away from the camera but if we say something like let's just if we say something like 200 it will start scattering the entire scene there without trees etc um let's just create a little less points here something like this and so on so guys this is it for this little rundown tutorial about how to use the ms scatter system um feel free to hit the like a subscribe button down below this tool is available on our patreon page um feel free to drop by check it out and um the i'm building this for the fx version as well for houdini and i'm building a spline scatter tool as well so watch the space for that tool and uh stay safe and take care and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye